It's a place that draws people from all over to visit its hot springs, to live. We love it. <laughs> Did you do the right thing? Yes, 100%. To its caverns, to the rivers and the canyon carved from one of them. What does the river mean in Glenwood Springs? The river in Glenwood Springs is the, the heart of town. A small city with a love of its past. Bill, hello. Good to meet you. Yeah, great to see you. <laughs> Good to be here. Can't wait to go inside. Let's do it. With a thousand stories. Without the rich history, it would just be a place, a town on the way to somewhere else. Where history is told on a steep hillside where 14 firefighters died in the 1990s. There's the fire line. They were working that fire line from the top, going direct right on the fire's edge. And how the lessons learned influence more recent fires that continue to threaten the community. And how the city looks at another big problem. I think there is a quiver of arrows. And boy, we're pulling all of them right now because it's a crisis. It's an incredible place. The wow factor here yeah. is about as high as it gets. It really is. People want to get a piece of something nowhere else has. I guess we just get along, you know. <laughs> you know, I don't know how else to say it. I'm Alan Janae, and I'm visiting towns and cities all over our state to hear your stories, learn your struggles, maybe even find some solutions. We're Uncovering Colorado. Welcome to Glenwood Springs. I'm Alan Janae. This city of a little under 10,000 attracts tens of thousands more on a busy weekend. But it's also a home, a place to make a living a place people are proud of. And it's a community that has some things to think about. If you're moseying through Glenwood Springs, you're likely to find your way to the intersection of 8th and Grand and Bullock's. Best corner in town. That's it. It's a family place where Roger Bullock loves selling hats and boots. Your sisters are in it, you're in it, and your brother's in it. Right. You get along? Yep. Roger finds the morning crowd browsers. I call them the circle of wagon people. They come in and go around the store and out the front door. In the afternoon, they get the real buyers. People looking to purchase maybe a little bit of the past. You know, all these ski towns, they've changed. I mean, it's everything has changed. Here, it really hasn't changed that much. We viewed ourselves as kind of that working class, real community that, yes, we have a tourist base, but we're not Aspen, uh, we're not Snowmass, we're not a Telluride or Steamboat. But there are changes that are concerning, says Mayor Jonathan Godis. If you look at the community as a collection of people and lives and families, we're losing our community. Because it may be loved too much. We'll still have the growth pressures. You will still have tens of thousands of people coming into our community from other communities, clogging up the road, spewing carbon in order to get to this community for our hospital, our retail, our government. To operate a business like De La Azteca, Salvador Barragan is having trouble finding people. He knows workers need more pay. It's hard to um, give them um, more money when we're not making enough. With his customers, there's not a lot of leeway. There's only so much you can charge people. That is correct, yeah. Otherwise, people won't, won't stop in buy anything if we raise the prices, yeah. Wages need to rise for workers to afford the housing that growth is making more expensive, says Anthony Munoz. He's with the advocacy organization Voces Unidas de los Montañas. A third of the population in the area is Latinx. The rent's just increasing through the roof, and we actually saw a spike of it happening during COVID, you know, where specifically mobile home parks, some mobile home parks have gone up as much as 80% during COVID in terms of rent, lot rent. Oh my gosh. What do they get for an excuse for that? Wish I knew. Growth is pushed by Glenwood's long list of attractions, like its hot springs and its rivers. But that richness of resources lends itself to further development, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. If you can find a place. Steve Beckley has profited here, owning Iron Mountain Hot Springs. And up the mountain on a gondola, he owns Glenwood Caverns Adventure Park. That's probably the toughest thing we're dealing with right now. You know, when is, when is too much, too much, and you know, enough, enough. I think there's a segment of the population that said the day I moved here, town was perfect. But keeping that would mean big limits, which would create change 
in a different way. Alan, we can change our building codes. We can make things so difficult for developers of any kind that we can, we can effectively shut down building growth in this community. I think what you'll have is you'll have an older population, a whiter population, a um, less robust socioeconomic and racial diversity of, of your population. And that may make Glenwood Springs more limited than it wants to be as it tries to hold on to something people come here to find. I understand why they want to do it, because they want to live the good life, you know. <laughs> Next, how Glenwood's past is a very important part of its present. If you sit by the fireplace here at Hotel Colorado, you can imagine watching the guests come and go in years gone by. Two presidents, William Howard Taft and Theodore Roosevelt, both took a liking to it. Roosevelt, after a hunting trip like Glenwood Springs so much, he came back year after year. The history in this town is indeed rich, some of the richest in Colorado, and it is not hard to find. Bill, hello. Good to meet you. <laughs> yeah, great to see you. Good to be here. Can't wait to go inside. Let's Come do on, it. Let's do Linwood it. Springs keeps tabs on its history here at the Historical Society and Frontier Museum. Linwood is and always has been really a tourist town. Exactly, it has been. At least since it was settled by people of European descent. But before that, for a very long time, it belonged to someone else, says Bill Kite. And the band here would have been the White River Utes. This area, with its beauty and resources, was so attractive, a treaty leaving it to the Utes was ignored. And so the term defiance then was actually the original name of Glenwood Springs. And that's why they were defying the treaty with the Ute Indians of no occupation. Pushing Native Americans out, Glenwood Springs started to grow, especially in the 1880s with the arrival of the railroad that still brings in tourists today. There was something for everybody. License tags issued by the health officer attesting to the health condition of Glenwood's Ladies of the evening. Yes. Wow. At Bullock's store, history lives in the basement. The Doc Holiday Museum's down here. Yes. There was a hotel on this site where Wyatt Earp brought Doc Holiday when the gunfighter was suffering with tuberculosis. He just decided to bring him out here thinking this is where he needed to be to yeah. maybe heal up. But Doc's luck ran out and he died in the hotel. Glenwood Springs drew a lot of big names and characters over the years, none bigger perhaps than President Theodore Roosevelt. Teddy was uh, one of the famous ones that came in. They even called uh, Hotel Colorado while he was here as the uh, Western White House. Places like Glenwood are subject to boom and bust. At so one time, the Hotel Colorado, which is on the National Register of Historic Places, it was uh, going to be torn down. During World War II, it was leased by the Navy as a convalescent hospital. Today, the hotel still celebrates another era. Glenwood Springs is at the intersection of past and present and trying to hold on to the natural resources that make it unique. Without the rich history, it would just be a place, a town on the way to somewhere else. Coming up, Home Sweet Cave. Cave? This is the kitchen. We're going inside one of the most unique homes in Colorado. Glenwood Springs is known around the world for its hot springs and for its caves. Now, this is a place that combines both of those things. The Yampa Spa and Vapor Caves takes water that upwells from deep beneath the ground here at 125 degrees, and it has 34 trace elements in it. Now at 110 degrees inside the caves, you can't stay in there very long. But any time in Glenwood's caves or rock formations or in its canyon is time well spent. High up in Glenwood Canyon may be one of Colorado's wildest construction efforts. Look closely, it's a house. This goes about 120 feet down to the bottom to a cave. It starts at the top of a shaft drilled and pried out by the man who built it 40 years ago. Recently, it went on the market. As the elevator dropped from surface to residence, real estate agent Will Vanis recalled what he thought of the owner's journey. Really, you do this every day? And he's like, uh, what's the problem? 
Well, caves are good for bears, a little tougher on humans, but it became a showpiece. Um, this is the entertainment rec room. He has a um, ping pong table right there too. And then this is the guest quarters room that's back in this vicinity. Our Spencer Wilson discovered the door leading deep into the mountain. Just steps from their bedroom, you've got a spelunking worthy cave room. This thing is absolutely incredible. It's a duck right here, but you see the tools he's been using to carve out this area. Incredible rock formations along the wall. But the outside is the real tree. This was some stuff that he early days created. The balcony of rock and concrete sits high above the canyon stairs along the canyon wall. He built all of this. He created everything we're standing on. All above the Colorado River. Are there any greater treasures than this river? <laughs> I would absolutely not. Hattie Johnson has years of experience as a rafting guide on the Colorado. Now she's a river advocate with American Whitewater, which has been advocating for the rivers that help define Glenwood Springs. Does the ebb and flow of the town go with the river and how it's doing? Yeah, absolutely. They were part of negotiations to help guarantee flows. As drought has dropped levels, the river has suffered. It's created high water temperatures something that in our typical cold water streams is not good for trout species and other aquatic species. It hasn't been the only problem. After the Grizzly Creek fire, landslides poured over the highway and into the river, clogging it. But people were not deterred. Local boaters in the rafting community came out and actually with chainsaws and removed a lot of those trees because they create a pretty severe hazard to recreation. The fire also meant the closure of the gem of Glenwood Canyon, Hanging Lake. The trail now reopened, but with a new permit system for visiting. It has meant limited access for people trying to get to the water. It's not an easy problem to solve, but we're hoping that we, there, we can find some solutions that work for everybody. Because this wonder of nature is an incredible place for people who love it every day. It's this incredible canyon. Next, how a fire just outside of town changed how wildfire crews across the West fight fires. In August of 2020, Glenwood Canyon was hit hard by the Grizzly Creek fire. You can see the process of recovery is just beginning for some of the trees and vegetation up there. It'll take decades. When this fire broke out, it was fought mostly from the air. That's because these slopes are too steep to place firefighters. It's just too dangerous. And that is a lesson that Glenwood Springs knows all too well. It's a twisted trail over red, rocky soil rising through dry-looking pinyon and junipers on the west side of Glenwood Springs. Incredibly steep country. We're with Lathan Johnson, a deputy fire management officer for the Bureau of Land Management. So this is where you can really start getting a good sense up here of the overall area and what they're up against when this fire happened. And the lives it claimed. These were our uh, really elite firefighters. We're hotshot crew out of Oregon, Prineville hotshots, smoke jumpers out of Montana and Idaho. And they had all come to Colorado because we were really dry that summer. Young people fighting the fires and more experienced crew members, all with good knowledge of firefighting, 14 of them. It was the first year of firefighting for Johnson, like a fire tower in his own right at close to six and a half feet tall. He has studied the history of what happened on Storm King Mountain. Right up on top is where the fire started on July the 2nd. Officially called the South Canyon Fire. It was a hot, dry summer. There were about 50 fires due to dry lightning in western Colorado. The South Canyon fire wasn't even a priority at first because it was on remote, steep land. The crews were sent in to get after it before it created trouble for Glenwood Springs. They were working that fire line from the top, going direct right on the fire's edge. The firefighters were building a line in a steep valley above Interstate 70 in a place that ultimately held a lot of danger. The wind really really funnels in here anytime it's blowing and definitely was a, a large factor the day the tragedy happened. Powerful winds in seconds drove the fire upwards at the firefighters, running up the grasses and the dry low trees with explosive force. It was a really incredible fire run. The fire spotted into the bottom of the drainage here and basically went from the bottom of this little sub drainage 
to the top of that ridge in about two minutes. The firefighters, seeing what was happening, ran for their lives. Two of the 14 tried to get around its side, but they couldn't. I know what they were thinking. They are thinking, okay, the fire's running that way. We're going to get out in front of it and come back around and escape to safety going this way. While some firefighters made it safely over the top of the ridge, the rest did not and deployed foil fire shelters that couldn't protect them from the extreme heat. They were in really good shape and, and they tried to run up out of the bottom and the flames were just faster than they could run to the ridge to get out of the way. Some were within probably about 100, 150 feet of the top. The fire in Storm King Mountain is Colorado's worst firefighting disaster. Today, there are 14 crosses on the mountain and many more lessons. I think you hear more and more times when we talk about on wildland fires, we can't stick firefighters in there because there's no safe way for them to fight that fire. Which there ultimately wasn't for the firefighters in the South Canyon fire. And we learned about it within 24 hours of the disaster. This is a copy of the area weather outlook obtained by News 4. This outlook went out at 7.30 yesterday morning. As I reported back then, a communication breakdown meant crews in the field did not get information about the strong winds coming that were forecast by the National Weather Service. Shifting winds, strong winds, winds up at least 30 miles per hour with some stronger gusts. It has brought a lot of changes that affected how big fires like the 2020 Grizzly Creek fire are fought. Immediately, we recognize that there's no way that we're gonna be able to put firefighters on those steep slopes. Helicopters would do a lot of the work. In modern fires with worsening drought conditions, firefighters are trying to jump on the fires faster. We're almost in a totally different place book on fires now, aren't we? Yeah, you look at South Canyon fire and it was just over 2,000 acres. And then you think about fires the last couple of years, Cameron Peak, East Troublesome, Grizzly Fire, they're 10, 30 times that size. And as they grow, the painful lessons learned in Glenwood Springs' most terrible day are burned into the memories of firefighters across Colorado and across the country. So that's something that the public needs to understand that there might be some points in time where it's just too difficult to get firefighters in and we have to try to keep make sure that they come home at the end of the day. Glenwood Springs hopes to never forget there is a memorial to the Storm King 14 here at Two Rivers Park. Let's face it, the town was in big danger from two big fires that could easily have burned straight through the city but it still stands. This park, Two Rivers, is at the convergence of the Colorado River and the Roaring Fork River, another great place in a town with so many of them. Each day, Glenwood writes new history as it moves forward. I'm Alan Janae. I hope you'll join us for our next town, and I hope you've enjoyed being in Glenwood Springs.